today we're in my daily driver the f-150 and we have yet another project to distract me from the 818 uh, what we're going to be looking at today is a comma ai 3x which is a level two driver assistance system uh, this truck has uh, level 2 ADAS already in the Ford Blue Cruise, but I have been extremely disappointed with it after 60,000 miles. I basically never turn it on anymore because it's more annoying than it is helpful. Uh, and while there is a purported upgrade in Blue Cruise 1.3, uh, it has been promised to the F 150 Lightnings and the Mach E's, although it's been promised for eight months now and not delivered. Uh, they haven't actually said whether it's coming in the F-150 or not. So what I'm going to attempt to do is help with the development of Kama AI's open pilot for the F-150. Uh, right now it is in extreme beta, probably even alpha phase. Uh, so this isn't something that uh, you're just going to go out and plug into your car like you would a Honda Pilot or a Toyota Corolla and have an amazing uh, ADAS system but it has a lot of potential. So I'm uh, gonna give a little peek here of how we get it installed and then we'll make a run with uh, Blue Cruise on and then we'll turn the open pilot on and make a run and, and compare the two. And to be honest, I don't expect this to be better than Blue Cruise, possibly even worse right now because it's still in the alpha phase, but uh, we're gonna even go and find out. So this is the device and uh, it's a little dirty because I've actually already headed out. I've been doing a little work trying to get it ready to mount. Um, but it's got a camera right here for monitoring the driver and then uh, your screen there that will tell you what's going on and then two forward-facing cameras for the uh, lane detection system it's uh, this device connects via USB-C to the harness box which is down here and the harness box is vehicle specific so I have the Ford Q4 uh, what we're going to do is locate the IPMA or the APIM. I'm not too sure which one of the two we actually jack into here. We'll find out when I get there. Um, but this basically intercepts the signal from the forward module to the steering wheel and then injects signals from the comma into there. So uh, the forward system will still be active. Uh, the comma just intercepts the signals and interjects its own. And then anytime we turn the open pilot off, uh, this thing will then just pass the forward command straight through. So that's, uh, those are the same connector. You could plug this into itself if you want it because uh, that's gonna plug into the box and then the box will plug into there. Uh, the RJ45 is I believe just for power. Uh, it'll get power out of the ODB2 port as well as some probably other data that's coming over ODB2. And then USB-C goes back to right here. So the first thing uh, I needed to do was get this mounted so that I could know exactly where I was routing my cables. Uh, it needs to be mounted in the center of the windshield as high as possible that you can still see it. And for me, I used a dry erase marker and I've determined that's right about there. Um, a second challenge for the F-150 is that these mounts that come with it don't work very well because they are uh, flat and the F-150 has a much steeper windshield than a car and so you need a mount that has more of an angle on it, an eight degree slant. And these are out of stock. So this one is 3D printed out of a carbon fiber reinforced nylon. Um, you can see I've been sanding on it. That's why actually everything's dirty. Um, there's a lot of complaints that the Comma 3X mount is too tight to begin with, even the, the factory one. And then a 3D printed one with its ridges and tolerances was even worse. So uh, just a little file to it. And I've been working on it until it will slide on and off uh, reasonably. Uh, it's still pretty tight, but it's at least reasonable. You can get it in, on and off now. So. This mount is about to go right where that line is. And then we'll get the uh, 3X up on the windshield so we can start routing cables.
So all mounted up now. Um, actually from my eyes, the top of the comma three X is perfectly even with the bottom of the rear view mirror. Obviously the camera on my phone has a different uh, wide angle or something that, that doesn't exactly catch the perspective of the human eye. So this is that's as high as I can mount it and not get it blocked by uh, the rear view mirror. So uh, next is to get the USB-C cable connected and ran up and then under the headliner edge. So uh, that's what I'll be working on next. All right, challenge number two after the mount is the USB cable. So the cable that comes with the comma about 12 to 14 inches long. Most cars have their control module under this black plastic cover so you only have to go a, a tiny ways to get to where your harness is. But the F-150 has it all the way under the driver's passenger seat. So you've got to run your USB cable over there. If you're working on a Mustang Mach-E, it's even worse. It's all the way in the trunk. So you need a really long USB cable. Now I bought a 90 degree, 10 foot long, USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 cable, which is what you're supposed to need, with a right angle on it. Fortunately, that's the wrong kind of right angle. You need that kind of right angle. So I've got mine run backwards. And uh, my current plan is to just buy a proper right angle adapter for right there. It works, it's just got a little bend in the cable and it's not the prettiest thing. Um, but I thought I'd show how I routed it. I brought it up, kind of threaded it under the cord there for the uh, rear view mirror, and then started tucking it into the headliner. Brought it all the way around, down to the pillar here. Now this is pretty easy. Uh, you've got your handle. Right there, you just use a small screwdriver to pop the cover off, and there's two, min two 10 millimeter bolts. Comes off, if you've got a speaker, make sure you unplug it. There's a nice little wire way right here you can get inside of. Uh, this here is your airbag, so be careful with that. And then when you come down to go down the dash, there's a, there's a nice little wire way here that you can get to by, let's see if I can hold this lifting back on your seal here and pushing your cable in and then you get right behind it right there and then when you come down to the bottom you got to pull out on it just a tiny bit so you can slide your cable under and then back through you can't do it one-handed but you're going to pull the cable back through there and now you're into the footwell where we're going to make our connection to the harness so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close this up and then I'll start working on installing the harness. Uh, now for the really fun part, getting connected to the module. Um, I actually wound up pulling the side cover off the dash, it just pops out. Uh, that would have made routing the USB-C cable a lot easier and I pretty much had to, to get to this module. Uh, if you look up under here, there's your OBD2 port. Uh, there's a module right here that's got a black and a gray cable. That's not the one you want. What you want is this black one that looks kind of like an amplifier. It's got heat sinks all on it. There's the uh, brown and green connector. And then there's one right above it appears to be the one we need. Uh, and I couldn't get my hands up in there to, to pull it off. What I wound up doing was reaching a, a small screwdriver up from the footwell to get the pin loose and then reaching in from the side of the dash here actually pull the cable and so now it's plugged in to the comma harness so i'm about to plug the comma harness in and then that should be left hanging down into the footwell for the cat5 and usb-c connections so correction it's not the gray cable nope it's the black one above it uh, the gray cable will plug into the comma harness, but the comma harness will not plug in where the gray cable is. So you had to get the, the one above it. And so this is, oh man, it's, it's tied up on here. That's the box with the Cat5 and the USB-C that we're about to plug into. 
All right, Ugh, the comma power and ODB two adapter is on. And then I just got a six inch Cat5 cable going down to the harness. So uh, most cars have their module up there. And so the comma comes with a short USB-C cable and a long Cat5. And you need the opposite for an F-150. You need a long USB-C and a short Cat5. Uh, so everything's plugged in. Uh, I think it's time for a power-up test. Uh, oh, it's it's already got power. So even though I haven't powered the truck up yet, we've already got power here. All right, I'm gonna have to put the phone down to do this. I'll be right back. All right, Wi-Fi's up. So now for the custom URL which uh, I'll put in the description. Keep in mind that those URLs uh, might change weekly. So, uh, you know, perhaps I won't put the link. Uh, I'll just put a link to the GitHub there. Well, it was a little more uh, frustrating than I thought it would be. It took me about 30 minutes to get the URL right. Um, it turns out that custom fork URLs aren't just as easy to find as you'd think they would be. Uh, and with the F-150, since we're in alpha mode, we need to run uh, the latest development branch. So I will, after all, uh, in the comments, put the, the URL for the software install, uh, along with kind of the, the understanding of how the URL is constructed. Uh, so it's installing now, and we'll see how many errors this thing likes up with the Christmas tree when I power it up. I don't know if we're gonna get to do a ride. We went three months without rain, and now we're on our third day in a row of afternoon thunderstorms. So it might not be good weather for our test ride. We're just gonna have to wait and see. I couldn't, couldn't wait for it to finish installing and rebooting to turn the truck on. I was just dying. It's, uh, it's a lot cooler than it has been. It's only 88 degrees. It's about 15 to 20 degrees cooler than it has been, but I was still pouring sweat. It's so humid pouring rain right now so uh but the good news is no errors no faults no codes truck is completely happy uh, cruise control comes on and off no issues uh, lane keeping goes on and off no issues so uh, we're about to get a reboot done we'll have to go through uh, all the legal stuff and then the main thing I have to do is uh, I have to get the IP address of this thing so that I can SSH into it because uh, there's some manual steps uh, that, that they haven't automated on the F-150 yet with regards to telling the comma what vehicle we're controlling. So I'm gonna get the IP address and then move on to the computer. Okay, so uh, no errors, everything's good. Install was complete, uh, came up and it went straight into a dash cam mode because it didn't recognize the car. Um, it's supposed to, over the ODB2 connection, pick up the ECU ID from the F-150 and know it's an F-150, but uh, didn't work. And I knew it wasn't gonna work because we're in, um, we're in an alpha mode. So I had to enable SSH on the device, set up SSH keys on GitHub, huge pain in the butt. You can follow the wiki on how to do it. SSH in and hard code that I'm a 14th generation F-150. Do a reboot and now we're in calibration mode. So the rain stopped. I'm gonna take it for a drive and see if we can get to calibrate. Yeah, it took about a 15 minute drive. It calibrated, it kicked in, it worked. Uh, right now, I believe Ford is still in control of the gas and brake using the adaptive cruise control and Open Pilot is in charge of the steering wheel. Uh, so what I'm going to do, we're going to head out. I've got the GoPro here running, so hopefully we'll get lots of footage. Uh, you'll be able to see the open pilot here. You can't see it great, but you'll see the projected path. You'll see it's green when it's engaged, uh, gray when it's not. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to head out. We're going to do a little bit of open pilot driving first to catch some things uh, that, that are kind of uh, unique uh, to non-highway streets. And then we're going to do a highway drive in open pilot uh, as a loop and then we'll unplug the open pilot the comma AI and run it in blue cruise so we can compare the two so There was an issue with the GoPro and I didn't get any video of the drive So I'll just offer a couple of, of quick thoughts and then try to get some drive video uh, 
uh, tomorrow. Um, out of the gate, I mean, this is an unsupported vehicle that's in development testing and I already feel like it performs better than the Ford Blue Cruise um, or Ford Lane Centering even without Blue Cruise. Uh, a couple of the big things. First of all, uh, it never shut off. The Ford system constantly uh, would just randomly say, I don't know what's going on, you have to take back control. Uh, even when the line markings appeared to be really good, uh, it would it would cause problems. It would just shut off. Uh, the open pilot never shut off. I drove through my neighborhood here, which Ford lane keeping never works on because there's no stripes on the road. And it did fine. It, it stayed on the right side of the road. It followed the curves perfectly, even when there were no stripes on the road. Uh, when the stripes did pick up, it automatically found them and centered itself into the right lane and then would just keep right on going. Um, it, it does move the wheel a little more than you would like. I mean, it's kind of doing this, and, and I understand why there's a branch out there called Ford Comfort. It does move the wheel an awful lot. You know, there's some tuning parameters to be done on the Ford uh, that have already been worked out on the, the Toyotas and the Hondas and the like. Uh, but it still does better than Blue Cruise. When Blue Cruise starts to move the wheel, it ping-pongs all the way from line to line. It's, it's doom, doom, doom. Uh, this never ping-pongs. It always stays in the middle. It may work the wheel a little much more than you'd like to stay in the middle, but it stays in the middle. Uh, the, the other uh, great thing was that it doesn't hug the right line constantly. Uh, anytime I'm driving with the Ford Lane Centering or Blue Cruise, I have to, to fight with it. I feel like I'm wrestling it and pull very hard to the left anytime I pass somebody who's on my right because it gets so close to them. Uh, I frequently, if I don't fight the wheel, will get the horn blown at me for how close it, it gets to a car that's on your right. No problems with that uh, with with the open pilot. It, it stayed dead center of the lane, did not hug the right, had no problems passing. So... Uh, those are my first thoughts. I, I think it's got a lot of promise. It's certainly not as polished as it could or should be. I mean, right now it's just doing lane centering. It's not even working the accelerator and brake, uh, but the potential is there for it to do what it does on other cars, which is, you know, a, a lot equivalent to the te Tesla full self-driving where it will actually uh, stop at red lights for you, make right hand, left hand turns for you. Uh, those capabilities are, are out there in experimental mode on other cars and uh, I think there's a real good start considering they, you know, support has only uh, just begun for the F-150s and the mach -E's and the other Fords that, that have the Sync 4 system. So, uh, really impressive. Uh, I think for a first drive, I'll try to get some video tomorrow of some open pilot drives and some uh, Blue Clues, Blue, Blue's Clues. Man, I haven't seen that in a long time. Blue Cruise drive so we can compare the two.